This will be a short video demonstrating a forest manufacturing model 2054 vertical blade traveling table bandsaw. I've done other videos with this machine, um, so I won't go into all the details, just uh, if you don't know. Obviously vertical blade bandsaw, high speed machine, uh, running a blade speed about 3,000 feet per minute. Uh, I think this one only has a two horsepower blade drive motor. Um, large traveling table. This machine does have all the interlocks, so it's got cabinet interlocks, open a cabinet door, so I won't run or turns off, blade breakage detector, low air pressure switch, um, has remote e-stops, it has table mounted controls, it has a manual table traverse. So I grab the handles and I push. Um, that's the material. The workpiece I have today is a block of polyurethane foam. Um, I believe that also goes by polyisocyanurate. The experts can correct me on that. But it's a big boy. It's 30 inches tall. I believe it's about 48 inches wide. Um, eight foot long. And it says right here, 844 pounds. So that's really at the high end of what you want to put on a manual traverse table. But uh, I work out, so I think I can handle it. Um, the blade today, the blade I am using is the wrong blade. It's a one inch wide, 10 tooth per inch blade. Oh, the material, I think it's like one and three quarter, maybe two pound per cubic foot density. Um, the right blade for this would be a one inch wide, three tooth per inch blade. I've got a 10 tooth per inch on here. It'll cut it a little more slowly and it'll leave a little finer edge quality, but really it's too fine a blade for cutting through this much material. But it's a blade I have on there and I'm gonna do it. It also is uh, telling, um, because one of the things you wanna know is basically how hard it is to push this workpiece through the material, or push this workpiece through the blade and the finer tooth blade makes that harder. I believe in this case though, just because of the weight of the workpiece plus table, and the rolling resistance of the, uh, the table mechanism, the force required to push the table is gonna far outstrip the force required to push the workpiece into the blade. Um, another note, this machine has our precision workpiece positioning fence. Um, I call it a workpiece positioning fence. You're supposed to put the fence where it goes and push the workpiece up against it. Um, very often we do get away with using the fence to push the workpiece around. This workpiece is too heavy for my fence to push. I'd strip the gears on it. If you do want a fence mechanism stout enough to move a workpiece this large, we can offer that. It's not what's on this machine. So I set the fence where I want it and then just shove the workpiece into it. Um, another important note about this workpiece, it has no flat surfaces. I'm test cutting this for an existing customer, somebody has dozens, maybe even hundreds of our saws, and they want to do a large semi-automatic or automatic processing line for these blocks. And they gotta knock the skin off of it. So it comes out of a mold, pretty much like you see it. Then they age it. Um, and what I found is this has no flat surfaces. Even the bottom is not flat. I assume that would be. But apparently after they pour it and let it age, it expands some more, it doesn't do so evenly, so we have all the sides have crowned or round surfaces. So this thing rocks everywhere. Any dimension, I've tried every face, it just rocks. What this means for a production application is that I probably need to do more than just set it on a table. I'll have to do something to grab it, sides in something. I'll have to grab it to keep it rocking around while I'm cutting. Once you have a flat surface, that's your reference surface, you can work off that. But right now I've got no reference surface, everything is bowed. So um, for the sake of the experiment of cutting this material, I just picked a big flat side, set it down, and we'll find out what happens. I have not cut this material yet. I don't know how this is gonna go. We'll all find out together. Start the saw. I may have to lean into this one a bit. It's cutting it just fine. Get a little more speed than that. You 
can see how the workpiece settled after the cut. The weight shifted. So, um, either the table rolling resistance is lighter than I thought, or my gym workouts have been more effective than I thought. Let me see if I can pull that cut piece out of here. I have a dust collection system for this machine. It's in use elsewhere in the shop right now, so I don't have it hooked up. So cutting the workpiece is not the problem at all. Perfectly good. The cut surface looks very flat, but it has a little bit, just a little tiny bit of a bow this way. And I think what's happening is that's a skin effect. So I think this outer skin is a bit of a tension element, is under a bit of tension. I cut it, I free this surface up, this surface pulled and it allowed it to go spring, spring a bit. So it looks like it's very flat. Let me have a look at the other work piece, the other half of the work piece. Yeah, that's dead flat. So when I cut the skin off, the skin comes off looking like a banana, even though the straight was, the cut was straight. Um, anyway, cutting this material, very easy. Um, I don't think any kind of back push off will be necessary to keep the workpiece in position as we cut it, but we may have to do something to grab it from the sides or ends to stabilize it, keep it from rocking as we cut. If you have any questions or like to discuss a specific application for a large or fancy bandsaw, please feel free to call or email us here at Forest Manufacturing. Thank you.